Hey you guys! Today we will review the new Ender 3 V2 from Creality. You wanna know more? Then stay tuned! Hi guys, welcome back! But before we start, please support the channel by clicking like in this video and subscribe to our channel. You can also help the channel by joining our Patreon page. So, a few weeks ago, we made a couple of videos about the new Ender 3 V2 from Creality. One with the assembly guide, and one with the firmware update guide. Since then, we have been testing the machine and now we are ready to give the review. This printer can be found today at a price range between 250 and 270 US dollars. The assembly is very straightforward and we didn't have any issues except with the squareness of the Z stepper motor. If you don't follow a certain number of checks and fixes, you might end up with a stepper motor and lead screw out of alignment and that will cause printing quality issues. For more details on this, don't forget to see our assembly video. Some of the features that can be seen right away on this model are the new display type, the new print head design, the belt tensioners on the X and Y axis, the power supply that is not on the side like the previous Ender 3 models, and the tools tray at the front. The display on this one is a D-Win type display, mounted in a vertical orientation. This is not a touch display, so you need to use the knob to move through the menus, but it's very easy and user-friendly. Creality made this easy to install and remove system for the display, but the flat cable is too short, so if the plan was to have the display detachable for easier operation, this didn't work. The print head cover is made from plastic and has a more attractive design. At the front, we have the hot end fan and at the right side, the layer cooling fan. The location of the screws that secure the hot end cover is also different. If you want to remove the cover to access the hot end, you need to remove the two screws at the back side. Inside, we have the traditional hot end, same as the one used in the older Ender 3 models. The belt tensioners are always a nice thing to have. You probably will not need to adjust the belt tension that often, but these will make the adjustment procedure much quicker and easier. On the previous models, the power supply is installed at the back of the right vertical profile, but on this machine, the power supply is hidden at the bottom. And the tools tray at the front is also a nice thing to have. You can store all the tools and spares here. Creality also included this knob for the extruder to help push or pull manually the filament. As for the board, this machine is equipped with a Creality 4.2.2 board, which includes a 32-bit microcontroller and four TMC's 2208 drivers. This board also includes a dedicated connector for a BL touch sensor, making it easier to upgrade. The X axis carriage also has a couple of threaded holes at the left side of the hot end cover, and that can be used for the BL touch installation. The firmware upgrade on this board is much easier to do. You don't need to install any bootloader on this one, and you don't need to connect the PC to the printer to flash the firmware. The compiled firmware is saved to a bin file which is then copied to the memory card. When the printer boots up, it will automatically load and flash the firmware from the memory card. The stock firmware installed on our version was the 0.0.9, .0 which had a few bugs, so we installed a better version. If you want to know more details on the firmware upgrade, you can check our firmware upgrade video. We added the link below in the video description. The power supply is a 24 volts and 14.6 amps from Meanwell, which is a very known and reliable power supply. The printer also includes the Creality's 4mm thick tempered glass as a print surface, 
The glass provides a smooth finish on the base of the prints and at the same time provides a more flat surface. The glass is secured by a couple of metal clips for easy removal. Personally, we would prefer to have a magnetic steel sheet instead, since it's much easier to remove the prints when compared with the glass, and a BL touch already installed from stock to compensate any warpage from the heat bed. The print area is the same as the previous models. Although the print surface is 235 by 235 mm, it's limited to 220 by 220 in the firmware. The spool holder on this one is a bit longer, which is a good thing if you want to use wider filament spools like the ones from Filament PM. The rubber feet are also thicker on this new printer. Well, from what we can see, there are several good improvements on this new model when compared with the older and their three models. But there are a few things that are bad on the previous models and have been forgotten and should have been implemented in this new one. One of them is the extruder. Although the stock extruder works reasonably well, this new version would work better with the Creality's Dual Gear Metal one instead. The filament input at the extruder should also have been fixed. The angle that the filament takes to enter the extruder will eventually damage the extruder input side. There are solutions on Thingiverse to prevent this, but Creality should have included this from stock. The bed springs are another weak point on previous models, and again, this new model as well. However, on the previous models, you could lower the bed and compress the springs just enough to give the bed the necessary stability. On this new model, you cannot lower the bed too much or it will hit the Y-axis motor at the back side. So the springs upgrade should have been installed on this printer from stock. One more weak point and an important one is the lack of ferrules on the wires that are connected to the screw type connectors. Reality should stop using tin wires and use ferrules instead. As for the print quality, we are happy with it. Our test prints came out pretty good as you can see. This model was one that came already sliced in the memory card. This is the traditional puppy but in a much smaller size. We printed another already sliced model from the memory card and this time is this pig figure. The lines on the head are caused by retraction settings from the profile that Creality used for this G-code model. We then made our own profile and tested it with the Ripple Cube. With the profile dialed in, we then printed this Benchy. The prints stick very well on the glass, so there's no need for products to help with the adhesion. And then, this bender figure. Besides making the motors run silent, these TMC drivers produce better print quality when compared with the Allegro drivers from the other Ender 3 printers. And finally, this airplane printed in vase mode. All the prints were made with PLA filament. The stepper motors run hot, but this is probably normal, since there is a hot surface warning sticker on the stepper motors. Also, we didn't have any layer shifts whatsoever. If you want to use our slicer profile, you can download it from our Patreon page. Check the link in the video description below. And that's it you guys. Any questions or feedback, let us know in the comment section below. We will see you guys next time. Bye!